Hey everybody, back at it again here at God's Country Hunting and Fishing. We uh, out here on Lake Darbone. I've had several requests for us to do some more wire net videos catching catfish. And uh, we decided to do a summertime, midsummer. Uh, we're coming into the end of July here and we got different conditions. We got a thermal climb in the water now. Water's heated up and how we fished on a lot of our other videos with our nets down in the water, we can't fish like that in midsummer. The fish will die almost overnight. Within a day or two, they'll be dead. We're gonna do something a little bit different today. I brought the crappie boat and we've got our live scope set up on the front of it and I'm gonna put some of these nets in and we're gonna video the underwater footage of these nets sitting there, how, how far below the surface they are, and explain a little bit about why we're doing that and all, and, and how we catch these catfish, and then we'll see what the end results is in a couple days. I got Miss Danielle back here helping me today. I don't know what she's doing. She's playing on the phone back here. She's taking pictures of the rainbow. <laughs> oh, she done found a rainbow over here somewhere. I'm gonna get her to do some filming while I set these nets out real quick. I'm gonna interview you. How long have you been fishing? Okay. It's the only one I trust to drive a boat. This is our this is our wire catfish nets. They're reinforcement wire. I believe this is inch and a quarter mesh. It's not inch and a half. I think it's inch and a quarter. Uh, these are legal in the state of Louisiana. They're legal in a few more states. If you're not in the state of Louisiana, you need to check your regulations on these. And make sure they're legal before you use them. But uh, they do catch channel cats real good, and it's a pretty good way. Uh, a lot of months out of the year to put some fish in the freezer. All right, I'm gonna show y'all how I tie mine. Uh, we're in about 13 and a half, 14 foot of water right here. And I've made sure there's no other net or anything tied on this stump. And I'm gonna hang this, this net, uh, about the, the rear end of the net will be about three foot under the surface, two to three foot. And the mouth end, the open end will be down toward the bottom just hanging straight vertical up and down alongside this tree but i'm going to show you all a little bit about how we tie them up and uh you know there's thieves everywhere and they'll steal your stuff so i try to make sure nobody can see my ropes when i get done with it so what i've got i've got a knot just a regular square knot tied in the end of this rope and i'm going to put a slip knot in it so i'm just going to tie another square knot right there and that makes me a slip knot that won't come loose. And I'm gonna cinch that down. Once I get my square knot cinched down, I'm gonna lower this down under the water here about six, eight inches where nobody can see it that drives by. And then I'm just gonna take this slip knot and cinch it down real good on this tree. Wind's starting to pick up, so it's gonna make it a little hard on me, but I'll get it. Just move that cinch that slip knot back and forth there. It'll tighten up around that tree and it won't slip down. And that's good enough. I'm gonna put one whole compressed cheese and soybean block. And I'm gonna drop that right down in there against that flue. Like that. Got a shot of that? That's all it is to it right there. Now, we gotta close our tail end up. So I'm cinching a draw cord up right there. I'm gonna hook one end of my bungee strap right there in that drawstring.
and I'm going to take the other end and run it right up there like that. And that keeps that drawstring closed. And that's all it is to it. So I'm going to pull it back up there and drop it straight down so I know that it's going straight down in there. Okay, so we got our live scope down and now we're shooting an image of that, that net. You can see here's the tree coming down and you can see the net right here. You can actually see two, four, the tail end of it is about four and a half to five foot right there below the surface because each one of these blocks is two foot. Right about, for the way the live scope's set up, we're looking, it's, it's about three and a half, four foot under the surface there. And then uh, the mouth of it, you can see how high it is off the bottom. Now I didn't know it, the, the transducer for our other uh, depth finder was showing 13 foot. I didn't realize that right here is a drop off. Like we're on the edge of a channel. I'm looking backwards now, you can see how shallow it is. So you can see right there, it's an old creek channel. So this, this snag is right on the edge of a creek channel, but I've already got it tied on there, baited and put in. So we're just gonna let it uh, set right there and just see what we catch. You can see some fish messing around down there. There's some long fish in there, so some of them look like catfish. But we're gonna look and uh, just let it fish right there and see what happens. Now I'm gonna show you something else right here. I'm gonna turn my sensitivity up on my live scope. And this is a perfect picture of what, what I'm trying to explain to you is you can see this line right here. That's actually the thermocline. So right now, we have a thermocline in here at, the top edge of it is right here at 16 foot going across here. And you can see all these fish moving around in here. And we got a lot of wind today, so I'm, I'm fighting wind trying to stay in here and show you this. But you can see all these fish in here just above that thermocline. And that's, that's because down here there's no oxygen. There, there's not any oxygen down here. So they can, you'll see fish swim down in this, but they won't stay very long. So in the, in the hot of the summer, I'm gonna say from, I started seeing this thermocline in Lake Darbonne about mid-June, depending on the weather and the temperature outside. But uh, I, can, I can run this gain on up and you'll, you'll see this line very distinctly. So you can see how all these fish are staying above that thermocline. It's pretty neat actually. I've never done this before with the catfish traps or nets or anything. Nah, what I'm gonna tell you is we fish our uh, slat traps the same way as what we fish this net right here in the summertime. We could, we could actually hang uh, slat traps in here the same way. Now we've, we've had this net in here just a couple minutes and you can already see the fish starting to congregate around this stump. Uh, when we first dropped it in and all, there wasn't much there. But you can see they're already working this stump. So it's pretty cool actually to see this because I've never really watched one right after I put it in like this. But these fish are already, you can see them working up, actually already working up toward the flue. The flue's on the bottom, the throat is. So that's where they'll go in. It's a pretty neat deal there. All right, so you can see there, we, we went ahead and tied our second rope on. We're on this stump, we're right below the water surface. Just makes it a little, little less visible, you know. Uh, stuff costs too much money to have sorry thieves coming along stealing our, stealing our goods. All that's good, we got our block in there, we're gonna drop this one in there. Looks like we're gonna be about three, three and a half foot below the surface with this one we'll take another look at it with a live scope to see how it went down in there. Just span around on this live scope and you can see all the fish in here. There's fish everywhere in this lake. And maybe catfish, there's probably some crappie. These these nets, I have never caught a crappie in. You don't have to worry about none of that. So they're crappie friendly nets. 
We're gonna fish these nets 48 hours. We're gonna run them two days from now and see what happens. All right, we found us a stump for our third one here. We're gonna get it tied off, bait it up, and get it in. Have to bring another bungee strap when we come back. All right, and that's it. So we'll drop that and down. You see how that flew right there? That's perfect. See how that cheese block went right down against that second flu? And my mouth goes down. There she goes. All right, y'all can see what we got right here. We got the net right there. That's the tail end. That's the mouth end, the open end. They'll go in there, and we'll check them in a couple days. You got recording now with the red button on. Yes, sir. But you got it facing you. Oh, I do. Now I'm gonna do it that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bradley laying down on his on on, on his belly to, to, to do something to the tail line there on the net. And it looked like that joker coming up full. Look at that. Got a few on it. We got a we got a we got a few in. In it. Yeah. Look at that. We got we got four or five in there. Good looking wire net. That ain't many. That ain't many, but it'll make the grease stink. Look at that. You can barely pull them out of that wire net. And nothing is better than fry holes. I don't, I don't believe you went three days. It was been any more fish. I mean, the block's gone. What nothing else coming mm, in? Nothing else gonna go in there. Maybe we'll bait them back up, huh? Huh? Yeah. We we here for the fish. Ain't got no hole in it. And we'll run the first one and got it baited back up and he fixed a chunk it out and and it'll it'll be catching fish. I might not have no fish. We go hungry. I'm gonna starve today. I mean you say you needed 18 on halfway there. Yeah, we're on pretty Lake Darbone. There are very few trees left in the lake sticking up, and then, and we we're at, at one of them. We we we're, we're raising another catfish trap. Oh, this one has got a lot more fish than that other one. The other one didn't have a ten, and I can I can I, I can see a lot more fish in this net. And these nets have only been out two days, and and we we catching some. Look like this is gonna catch some good fish uh, in it. Boy, it's a pretty day on Lake Darbo. It's a little windy, but any day you can get out on the water, get away from your work, get your mind off your your wife, and and and, and uh, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, get your mind off your wife and just get out here and enjoy the good outdoors. <laughs> Sorry, Bradley. <laughs> oh, man. Is it all smell? It's all good. <laughs> no? Well, Bradley's wife stepping up that, stepping up to the plate to, to, to hit. To, to, Help old Bradley get that net in. Oh, look at that. Look at those fish. Old hog, old hog woman, and know how to fish too. She, she know how to hog the fish and bring them on in. Yeah, look at that. Bradley, that's a good pile of fish. No more than two days. And, and they have ate all that cheese up, hadn't they? Make 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 sure you throw that brim back. Don't let him fall in the bucket. Watch your hand. How do you get out? You know how to bring it on home, don't you? I call old Bradley Meat Man because he's gonna put meat on the table everywhere he goes. It's meat. Hog hunting, deer hunting, fishing. He's going to be meat on the table. Doing the best one back. You're missing it all. Who? Supposed to keep me throwing some of them back. Yeah. Throw some back. That could be supper for tonight. Yeah. Rather we're throwing some small ones back. Oh. Back in the, in, the, in the lake, we're gonna let them grow and get a little bit bigger. Fish are flying out of the thing. Oh gosh. That was perfect for whole fryers. Yeah, I love those. I, love, I, I like those fry holes, whole fries. Be late. We better bait this one back up. Yeah, we're going to bait this one back up. That's $6 worth of bait going in there. Well, look like we uh, got this one under control, and we got one more net to run. And we'll go home and fry some fish. And go home and fry some fish. Or maybe grill some with bacon. Mm -hmm. Just call me when you're the way done. That's what I like. That's right. We'll just take you into our house. Got the third and last one. Yeah, this is the third and last one. We're back on. We're still on Lake Darbone. It's pretty. We are in the kind of the big part of the, the, the lake on Lake Darbone. Uh, look like it, it's doing pretty good for the bait because that last net had quite a few in it on a two day run. Uh, three day run, there ain't no telling what he would have. Oh, look at here. I don't see nothing flopping, but I see him hitting the net. Look like a big fish might be in this one. Look at, look at them fish. There he is. Are you going to bait this one back up, Bradley? Yeah, we might as well. Yeah, might as well. Oh, it look like we got about 20 fry holes in there. So one good fry hole, we're back in the water. Oh, we got a good mess of fish for supper tonight. Everybody's happy. My wife will be happy. River will be happy, and Papa will be happy too. <laughs> Try it. French fries, French fries, hush puppy, coleslaw, onion, big old big purple onion. Oh, you talking about good now? It's gonna oh, be good. Dessert. Oh, that dessert is that's the main thing. Banana pudding. Say hi, Mr. Loy. Huh? Hey. There he goes, Mr. Loy. There he goes. Tell y'all what, we'll come out here today and run these nets. That's on two days. Got us some blue channel cats. 
two days we got all we want to dress that's gonna be it for now we're gonna try to get these fish home get them clean maybe cook some for supper put a few in the freezer y'all be sure to subscribe to our channel hit the likes and shares comments always appreciated we try to reply back to all of them hit that bell set that bell to all and stay tuned we're gonna have more coming god's country hunting and fishing keeping it real